Okay, so we're going to start by talking about how to name binary ionic compounds. Binary just meaning two things, or taking two elements, joining them together to form a compound. Um, and ionic deals with how they bond. Um, you may have learned it back in middle school. Ionic compounds have something gaining electron, something else losing an electron, and so the positives and negatives combine. If none of that rings a bell, don't worry about it. Um, we're, for our purposes, we'll know that we are working with a binary ionic compound. If we have a metal and a non-metal. Um, the naming system we're going to use for this is going to matter for every other type of thing we end up naming. Um, this is kind of the basis of it. So this is just the most fundamental naming structure you need to know. Um, an example, I think learning these through examples makes the most sense. Let's say I have Al2O3. So that's a formula. That's a chemical formula for a compound. Um, and I ask you to name it. We always have two elements that we're naming, aluminum and oxygen in this case. Um, you can tell, by the way, the capitalization matters a lot in a formula. Every element starts with a capital letter. So that's a lowercase l. I know that it's not just a l 2 3 but it's two ALs and three Os, if that makes sense. Um, I'm always going to start by taking the first element and just writing its name exactly as it appears on the periodic table. The first element is always going to be our metal. And so for the metal, we just write its name, no changes. So I find Al on the periodic table. I see that it's called aluminum. I would write aluminum. Always never do anything else to it. Notice I didn't do anything with that too. That's okay. You'll learn in the next video, you'll learn why that two and that three are there. But in terms of going from the formula to the name, we don't need to look at the subscripts at all. Don't look at them, don't let them throw you off. Um, the second element is always going to be our non-metal. And this is where we have to change a little bit. Um, I'm going to write its name, but I'm going to change the ending to ide, I-D-E. So we normally would call it oxygen. I'm going to change it to oxide. Now, how do you know where to change the ending? Why is it not oxidized? I don't know, because that sounds really weird. Um, most things will make sense, or once you see them a couple of times, you'll know where the ending is that you're changing. Um, let's see, chlorine would become chloride. Phosphorus, phosphide. Sulfur, sulfide. Um, you'll kind of feel your way through it, um, but having the ending of ide tells us um, that we're working with an ionic compound here. Okay, so Al2O3 would just be called aluminum oxide. Nothing about the two, nothing about the three, and that's okay. Um, another example for you, um, NaCl. Na on the periodic table is sodium. It's the first word, it's the first element, it's a metal, so I don't do anything to its name. The second one is Cl, which is chlorine, but instead of chlorine, I make it chloride. Uh, you may have heard of chlorate. That's something different. Uh, we'll talk about it. Try the try problems.